Hi, I'm Saray Parangi, one of the endocrine surgeons at Massachusetts General Hospital. Once your thyroid nodule has been evaluated by a physician, the information obtained will be used to decide how to proceed. Your thyroid specialist will use all the available information, such as your age, your family history, the feel of the nodule, how it looks on ultrasound, and the results of the fine needle biopsy. The biopsy results are especially important because they give us a glimpse of the cells inside the nodule. Generally, the four results categories are benign, so the nodule shows benign cells, malignant or very suspicious cells are present in the nodule, and then sometimes, unfortunately, there's a gray zone. These are called indeterminate biopsies. And there's finally a category called non-diagnostic. Unfortunately, sometimes thyroid biopsies are non-diagnostic. That means not enough cells were withdrawn to be informative. The cytopathologist cannot give you any additional information because there's just not enough cells. That happens sometimes despite our best efforts. If that has happened to you and you have a non-diagnostic biopsy, then it'll just have to be repeated, usually within about three months. When your thyroid biopsy shows a benign nodule, the results are very accurate if the nodule is not very large, generally under four and a half centimeters or about two inches. Patients often have these benign nodules, which are similar to benign lumps anywhere in the body, such as moles and breast lumps. These benign nodules need to be followed by you and your physician. You should report any changes such as an increase in the size or changes such as pressure, voice issues, or trouble with swallowing. We do generally recommend that you not forget about these nodules. You should have at least yearly blood work related to your thyroid and ultrasounds initially. If the nodule remains stable for many years in size and does not develop any worrisome features, the frequency of these visits will be decreased over time. Unfortunately, some nodules with benign cytologic findings under the microscope will still need to be removed either because they're very large or because they cause pressure in the neck or difficulty with swallowing or hoarseness. When your thyroid biopsy shows cells that are clearly malignant or cancerous or quite suspicious for malignancy, then surgery is the next step. In general, the recommendations for this biopsy results are for the removal of the entire thyroid, unless the nodule is very, very small. You will need to meet a thyroid surgeon. It's best to spend a little bit of time and energy locating an experienced thyroid surgeon. This is critical not only because of the delicate nature of thyroid surgery, but also because experienced surgeons often work with a multidisciplinary team, such as endocrinologists, radiologists, and nuclear medicine specialists. A total thyroidectomy is generally performed in the hospital under a general anesthetic and can take anywhere from one and a half to three hours. During this surgery, the thyroid gland is disconnected from its blood supply and then carefully removed from its attachments to the windpipe. Total thyroidectomy is delicate, and there are some important risks that your surgeon will review with you. Make sure to discuss them in detail so you have a good understanding of these potential risks. Some risks to discuss and go over in detail include bleeding, injury to the recurrent laryngeal nerve, voice changes, and problems with calcium regulation. These particular complications are the most important ones and the most common ones, and you should have a clear understanding of these when done with your meeting with the surgeon. Luckily, recovery from thyroid surgery is usually quite straightforward. Most patients stay in the hospital at most just one night, and usually there are no surgical drains to be removed. Patients who have their entire thyroid gland removed 
will need to start taking daily thyroid hormone from then on. Unfortunately, sometimes thyroid biopsies do not give a clear answer, and some patients end up with nodules that are in this gray zone. These biopsies are called indeterminate. In this particular case, it's not that there's not enough cells, it's just that the cells that are there are not giving a clear answer. In this particular group, some patients will need to have repeat biopsies. If a repeat biopsy is recommended for you, then often these days, the aspirated cells will also be subjected to some newer molecular and genetic tests. These molecular tests have been developed to determine which genes or proteins are present in the cells and help further categorize the nodule as most likely to be benign or suspicious. These newer molecular profiling tests clearly have a role, so do feel free to ask your physician about them and whether you are a good candidate for using them. Some patients with these indeterminate nodules will ultimately need to have one half of their thyroid removed in order to accurately tell if that particular nodule is cancerous or benign. Removing one half of the thyroid allows the pathologist to look at the entire nodule under the microscope, including the capsule or the lining of the nodule. This will help them accurately determine whether this particular nodule was cancerous or not. If the nodule turns out ultimately to be benign, which is the case in about 70% of patients, no further surgery will be necessary. However, if the nodule turns out to be malignant, then often a second surgery will be recommended to remove the remaining portion of the thyroid. While this may be a disappointment to you if you end up needing more surgery, remember that this conservative stepwise process was recommended because it helps avoid additional unnecessary surgery in as many as 70% of patients. When surgery to remove half your thyroid is recommended, then you will need to meet with a thyroid surgeon. And just as I mentioned before, it's best to spend some time and find an experienced surgeon. Removing half the thyroid is a shorter operation, but the risks and recuperative period are very similar to a total thyroidectomy. The good news is that many patients who have half their thyroid removed do not need to take thyroid hormone after the surgery, and there will also be no need for calcium supplementation. Somewhere around six to 12 weeks after your surgery, your physician will order some very sensitive blood tests to see if your remaining thyroid is working normally or if you might end up needing to take some additional thyroid hormone.